this might be a pass for me. Why? What is wrong with it for you? It's a severe need of servicing, which is going to be expensive. And then on top of that, um, the crystal is beyond repair, which could be polished, which is not a big deal, but you have such a gash in there. It's a $700 crystal. All right, we're just authenticating our watches and take a look at what we discovered. If you check these two boxes out, see if you can kind of pick up on yourself what we noticed. Definitely the one on the left is fake. It's not a double red. I wish it was, but it's a great white. Um, it's kind of like a sub, but a little bit bigger. It's like, you know, the 70s, 80s version of a deep sea, but actually wearable. They're super nice. They have a super dome crystal. Very, very beautiful watches. So I'm bringing, um, I'm bringing Vic with me because he's getting into vintage. He just bought a big one, vintage piece. So I guess, well, he's wearing a vintage piece today. Yes, sir. Yeah. 5513, 1969. Marco hooked me up with a, New insert temporarily, but I mean, I may have to make you an offer on it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. Hey. It's a Mark III. You gotta pay to play, huh? Yeah, true. That's yeah. very true. That's what the casinos tell me all the time. And so, as Marco just said, I'm lear learning vintage. Uh, it's a meters first. Can't forget that. These God, are so yeah. sick. You, you guys know I'm a car guy, man. I respect these Broncos. I'm not a Ford guy, but I mean, I think they, uh, they did a great job. I mean, my wife, she hates gold wheels. But you can't tell me that doesn't look fire. All right, so how are you feeling the vintage stuff lately? I mean, what, I, I'm actually curious. Like, I have never pegged you for somebody who wants to get into vintage. So what made you decide all of a sudden to get into vintage? Man, so obviously starting out, it's like you like the generic, you know, modern pieces. Uh, once I was able to obtain those, you you know, the last two years, man, I've switched out between so many different pieces from Day Dates to Panda Daytonas to even a Royal Oak AP. So after just trying out all the new stuff, you kind of get bored and tired of it in a sense because they all look the same. Right. So, you know, a lot of pieces that you bring in, you always talked about characters, characteristics within the watch. And once you just start realizing like, none are gonna be the same in a sense, you know? Right. Patina's gonna look different, bezel inserts are gonna look slightly different, this, that, and the third. It's fascinated me in a way that I never imagined. So it's not like I just, you know, was a vintage guy at heart since day one. True. So I think I, man, something to do with- I feel uh, like you always had somewhat of appreciation for it, because throughout the years, you've definitely liked seeing the vintage stuff I've had. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and I told it's funny because the other day you had posted that Daytona. I think you picked up in uh, which one? Oh, the, the Zenith. Yeah, I had messaged you, and I was like, "Man, <laughs> my love for <laughs> vintage. I don't know what is what's that's, going that's on." That's kind of vintage and flashy. Yeah, that's like the old school. You know, that's the old school look that people mm -hmm. used to go for. And two, that two tone Daytona back in 1996. Mm -hmm on the resale market would have brought probably twice as much as a stainless steel one. Mm -hmm. Because everybody wanted that look. So if you had a two-tone, you were balling. If you had a stainless steel one, you were just kind of joining the club. What's up, what's up? Hello, guys. Look at that dome. I think it's domed. Like, look how fucking crisp it is. It was so hard to open it. I feel like it's never been even opened and like nothing before. The the bracelet took like over 10 minutes to remove it. It was like in there good. This is a really serious watch for the time too. I mean, if you think about it, if you put it next to like a GMT or a sub from that era, it's like oh, yeah. so much more advanced. For what it is, yeah. Especially with that helium escape valve. What are you thinking, Marco? Uh, I need to get a light on the dial just to check the dial very carefully. It's got the correct end length, so uh, 1665 has always come with 50 or 580s. 93150 is um, correct for a later, later 1665. So it's got a really nice patina. The only thing is, man, that crystal is kind of. I mean, based off of my knowledge of like opening and closing watches, I can tell you this watch is n everything on there was like what originally came on it. Oh, I hear you. I just want to check. 
It's zero percent Frankenstein out. Yeah, but I have to check. You know the dial. I want to make the plots sure. are so thick and fat. Look at that. Here's the thing. When you're buying watches like this, you want to make sure one, there's no oil stains on the dial, which is a problem. Two, <clears throat> you just want to make sure, obviously, loom plots look okay. There's no issues. So, just to give you an example, of what we look for when we're using a, a black light. So, obviously, this uh, this custom seat roller next to us has been customized, reloomed to look vintage, but it's not. And then the one next to it is actually vintage. So, you want to check one of several things. So, if I put this black light, you see how nothing's happening. There's, there's no reaction. No. But if you go here, you see how it lights no, up white? Really? Can you see that? What do you mm -hmm. mean? See the white? That's tritium. So that's the tritium reacting to the black light. So but you see nothing there. There's no any type of reaction. So that's nothing. There's, that's obviously reloom to look vintage because it's a custom watch. But what you really want to look for is that reaction. So, so the early ones will have a green reaction. It'll look like it's like. Almost that, uh, was that star, that stuff you just put in the, when you're a kid, you put it on your ceiling, those little stars? Yeah. yeah, it'll look like that stuff, so you see? Oh, oh shit, that's crazy. Yeah, and it'll actually glow for a split second, so that's... It's crazy, you literally only get a split second, so then it's gone. This one, would, I need my microscope, but it looks reloomed. It's just because the consistency of the, the hands and the consistency of the markers are not the same, and I'm not getting a reaction. Well, what did you not get a reaction? This one. Blind. Maybe reloomed. You can see it's very fine sink like but the patinaing is so strong on that. Bro, you don't lose the radium or I'm sorry, you don't lose the tritium reaction though. So I'm not too thrilled about this one. Yeah, needs a lot of work. This doesn't screw down. This is a very expensive crystal. It is original. Yeah, it's very expensive. It's like a six, seven hundred dollar crystal, but you usually you can get away with buffing them and we're cool. But there's a big, really nice, thick scratch along there that really digs into the crystal, so that has to be replaced. And finding a tropic crystal, very expensive. Um, and he did say the case was like unpolished, but you don't really see those bevels anymore. You barely make them out, but it's the case is thick and even, but I don't, I'm not terribly excited about this watch. Missing the pearl, whatever, that can be fixed. This might be a pass for me. Why, what is wrong with it for you? It's a se severe need of servicing, which is going to be expensive. And then on top of that, um, the crystal is beyond repair, which could be polished, which is not a big deal, but you have such a gash in there. It's a $700 crystal. Um, the crown doesn't screw down. You know, the, the case is very rounded. I like to see chamfers on something for that kind of money, like nice chamfers and nice, you know, very, very faint. Like if you see the one. I don't believe it's been, I don't believe it's gone through too much of a... Well, polished, but it's gone through a lot of wear. No, it's a lot of wear, yes. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's been, been polished it's many been times, worn, but no, yeah. I do see consistencies of having a history of polish. It's not, you know. Because you definitely do see the chamfers, which back very, then, how people were polishing, rounded. it would have been gone probably in one or two polishes. No, I know, but it's very faint. So like, cases like this, I just want to see more of a crisp edging, but it's just, yeah, it's not for me at the price. Mar Marco doesn't yeah. see the price that we're asking. I mean, it's not that I don't see the price, I just don't see the quality. I got it from a guy who kind of knew what it is, and he got it from a guy who kind of knew what it is, so it was no, if I could take it for 10, 11 grand, you know, I'd, yeah, 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 of course, but that's not the case. That's not what happened this time. Yeah. <laughs> no, trust me, it doesn't happen every time. I, over, I overpay for shit all the time, it's just, you know, when it's the right one. I think we watch. overpaid. I think no, you didn't overpay. I think we saying. paid the correct number. You did, 100%. Yeah. I, I think it's a good number. That's the number I would pay. That's what I'm saying. Like. Leaving me because I'd want to be into that watch. Look, here's the standpoint. I'd want to I'd want to be in it for 17.5 all in, meaning everything is like good and crisp, and then I can retail it for around 19.195. They're not quite bringing. There's sets. There's. I mean, I looked on Chrono this morning. There's sets for like low, low, low 20s. 20s. Yeah, 20, so it's kind of hard to compete with a set when you have this piece. Having dumped another, you know, fifteen hundred bucks. I saw it there. around like a retail of around twenty. That's cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm that's saying. What I'm 19 saying. Five. That's what I'm saying. I'd want to be under twenty to make it more appealing. You know, so, because you don't want to start with a two when box set starts with a two. Oh, you know? that, I, I like that strategy when we're talking about modern watches, but when you're talking about something like this, it's like, you know, I have it right here. What's 500 or a thousand when you're buying it from like, you know, up your preferred dealer, yeah, I you know? Love on that, but yeah. my clients, they, they will uh, gladly go to the next guy. Oh, <laughs> they will gladly go to the next guy if they, know, if they see two grand more for a full set. 
So it is what it is, but I appreciate you showing it to me. Anytime, my friends. All Thank right, you man. for coming by. Good seeing you. All right, we got a couple sweet watches in, and we want to do an unboxing. It's been a long time since we've done something like that, and we kind of just want to show you, you know, a few things that we get in before we put them in the showcase. For sure. So here we have the Omega Speedmaster 321 Ed White. So this is a really important collection piece for anyone that's an Omega fan, like myself. So there are not too many made in the world of these. They do right around a thousand per year. So it's pretty rare to see something like this come by our office. So we're really excited to have this here. So here we are. This is the Omega 321. So a lot of people say that it looks just like the Speedmaster Moonwatch. And it does because it's the original Moonwatch. It's the one that started it all. It's the granddaddy. It's a 39.5 millimeter. It's not a 42 millimeter like the Moonwatch is now. I like a small, a smaller dial. You like a smaller dial? Yeah, 39 is perfect. Yeah, super cool, super sleek. So it's a super cool watch. The cool thing about this watch is that there are only a handful of watchmakers that can make this 321. And what they do is they assemble the movement together. They take it out apart and then they reassemble it again just to make sure that everything works well. And you really don't see that nowadays with many watches. So this is one of the only watches that takes everything apart and puts it back together. The Elongas are one of the brands that do that, but for something like Omega and Omega's price range, this is really rare. So what does that retail for? The Ed White retails for $14,000, but it is a sweet, sweet watch. I mean, you're getting so much bang for your buck here. I mean, the, the movement itself, it's such a complicated movement. And just remember, there's only a handful of people in the world that can do this. So this is a really, really special watch. Um, it resembles everything that Omega stands for. You know, everything from going to the moon to taking care of their movements to, you know, really having pride in what they do. This is, in my opinion, it's my best and favorite Omega that's out right now. Yeah. And, you know, I know a lot of people like the Bond. I know a lot of people like the Green Seamaster. But in my opinion, this is the best Omega that we have. And the fact that, here, you can hold it if you want. So you have to wait around two years to get something like this. So whenever you go to an authorized dealer or an Omega boutique, you tell them that you want an Ed White and they won't give you an Ed White, not because they can't, but just because since there's only a handful of people that can make this movement, it'll take a really long time to make it. So for us to have it here in store is a treat because you don't have to wait. You can just come literally right now and we can just sell it to you. So I think that's freaking awesome. How many of those did you sell when you were at Omega? I literally sold like two of those because they're so rare. How long were you there for? I was there for a year and a half. So in a year and a half, did your other coworker sell them or? They sold one. Well, actually they sold two. So you sold four in so the total I, of year and a half. I actually sold one like this, but it was the meteorite dial. So it's even oh, rarer, yeah, make, okay. but it was literally like someone came in and they just got lucky because we had it there. Oh, you just you didn't have someone on, on the call for it? No. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, so they're not instantly allocated out? Always? No, no, no. But these here, like they take so long to make that we, that, you know, people at boutiques and at ADs literally have people canceling their, yeah. they're, they're like, give me my money back. I don't want to wait anymore. So they really take the, the movement completely. They build it, unbuild it, and then put it back together? Yep. Thanks. Just it's it's an old school way to make movements, and it's just yeah. to make sure that that the movement is working, you know how it should work, um, and that's just one of the neat things about this watch. I mean, it's com it's so beautiful. It's stainless steel, um, thirty nine point five millimeter. You can't go wrong. I think it's the best bang for your buck. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think it's a great watch. Um, it's available on our website and here. So if you want to come by and get it, let us know, Lewis or Jai. Let's go. Cool. I would literally like throw this box away, low key, because this is so much. Throw it away? I mean, I guess not because yeah, I want to resell yeah, it. Add that in. The, yeah. <laughs> Put those box away. All right. For our next watch, there are APs and then there are APs, and this is one of those ones that is just a rare bird. I've never personally seen one out in the wild. I've seen a handful come through the shop, but when it comes to <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> It's, this is a rare bird. I've never seen one out in the wild. I'm like, I'm just going like Thinking on about birds. So this one right here is one of those ones that when you start to build your relationship at AP, many, many people work to build to this level. This is one of those pieces that once they give you the call, Jeez. you know you've made it in the retail world. Um, or you can just skip the line and buy from us directly if you like what you like. So this is the AP Skeleton, or known as the Open Work. So this is the Double Balance Wheel 15407 ST. ST being that is in stainless steel, so this is not the rose gold version. 
This is more of an everyday kind of piece. And you obviously got that double balance wheel there. So sick. Which if you know, you know the double balance wheel is just to help with inertia. When you daily wear the piece, it keeps a more accurate time. Wow. So that's why they implemented that. The cool thing about this piece is it does get that double balance wheel, whereas the 39 millimeter and 37 millimeter skeletons from AP do not get the double balance wheel. So that's what you kind of pay for the premium. Obviously you get the full size watch, but also you get the more you know intense movement. Okay. So yeah, I mean, just a absolute, absolute gorgeous of a piece. What is it, stainless steel or platinum? Yeah, no, stainless steel, yep. Dang. So you can tell because of the way it is. <laughs> right, no, it's freaking nice, man. No, hey, this, yeah. this is the type of watch that like, when you're around the Rolex boys and you whip out, like everyone's literally gonna be like, cricket, cricket. Like no one's gonna say anything because you're just like, this is oh, like, yeah. le there's levels to like watch, levels to watch making and that's like. Cause you either bought this at retail and it's like, how did you get that call? Or you bought it in the gray market where we deal in, like, which is like, how do you have that much money? Exactly. So it's such a, you know, win on either end. Um, it's a crazy, crazy piece to have. And obviously people who don't know watches, a lot of like normal pieces kind of go under the radar. Like a 5711, something that's a way heavy hitter. A lot of people never notice. Right. This, anybody would notice. That this is, is so like the nice. definition of like an FU watch. I have that's something. So sick. Yeah, I mean, like, you get just lost the, in that dial. Are the markers, is that are, gold? Yeah, yeah, everything's Dang, that, yep. Bro, it's so freaking nice. Yeah, and all the hour indicators, the hands, the balance wheel, all that. You can literally see through it. Like you can see through, like when you're when you're holding it, you can see your hand behind the dial. That's that's crazy. That's like freaking lost in the sauce. Yeah, no, absolutely gorgeous piece here. All right, we're just authenticating our watches and take a look at what we discovered. If you check these two boxes out let's see if you can kind of pick up on yourself what we noticed definitely the one on the left is fake so the first thing that kind of caught us off guard is the foam rolex has a specific foam and once you see it once you and honestly a few handful of times you just don't misplace it this one's weird has a weird pattern on it you can kind of see through it a little differently and then look at the crown on this box how it's kind of this awkward yellow whereas this one is like a very pronounced gold so that's also a huge clue. And then the outer box themselves is quite the biggest difference. I mean, you can spot this from just picking up out of the mail. It's more rosy here, and this one's more yellowy. Yeah, so this has the nice cream looking texture to it. And then this one is just awkward green looking, just, you know, cheap fake. They smell weird as well. We don't need to go all the way through the pills and all that, because honestly, the outside is what you're really looking for. But yeah, so we just got ourselves a fake box. We're gonna handle it right now and get it a uh, get an original one. I don't know if they knew that this was fake. Um, it did come from a dealer. I don't know if I should even be mentioning that. But it came from a dealer, and basically we're just gonna bring it up to them right now. They're probably just gonna send us another one. It's an easy thing for people to get and send back out, especially if they bought it from someone who's trusted. I'm sure they just wholesale the wholesale. But yeah, anyways, we're gonna take care of it right now. So that's what we do. We check everything. We want to make sure that when we're selling you a watch, you're getting everything OEM original from Rolex. So we check the boxes. We check the pillows. We've had a real box with a fake pillow before we make sure everything goes out factory you know specs so yeah we're gonna definitely swap this box out before we send it and we're gonna send that back to the dealer who sent it to us and get another one back to replace it or they're just gonna pay the difference all right the dealer did what's right they sent us a new box here so let's just do a quick authentication on this thing so flap down looks good the first thing you really check that kind of gives away is the seam on this thing so let's give it the smell test <laughs> smells like switzerland we're good <laughs> but this one's all good. Uh, we got another one right here. It's obviously an uh, authentic box with a sub here and you can just kind of see how similar they are. So obviously when you see the two boxes, you know, side by side, when you got a real one and a real one, how similar everything works, kind of seamless. Whereas when we have that fake box, you know, there's different colors, different smells, doesn't smell like Switzerland, smells like a different country. And it is, uh, you know, glue is coming out of that seam. It's just awful. But yeah, they did the right thing and we got the real box. Honest mistake by them, we do a lot of business with them, so I think they just had an oversight. What's up, guys? What's up, oh, what's, what's going on? How you doing? Good. I'm doing good today. We're talking about the podcast. I don't know if you guys have seen our podcast yet, but we are doing a podcast weekly where we talk about things beyond timepieces, which is something that I get ridiculed for because people want watch content. And I'm like, Marco has under the loop, which is on Thursdays, all watch content. And Marco does Date in the Life with the rest of our team where there is more watch content. So me and Chris. Chris, what's going on over here? Man, two of my favorite things, going fast and being on a podcast, baby. <laughs> Here's the deal, we need you guys' help. 
If you have any questions for us, put them in the comments below. Uh, we want to do an Ask Us Anything segment. Also, give us some tips. Who do you guys want to see uh, on the podcast? The comments are below, not below. Yeah, bro. <laughs> They're below. Yeah, the what comments. Below. Yeah, there you go. And bro. any topics that you guys want to hear from us. I mean, we got a list of topics together, but if there's something that topics, you Topics, guests, anything you want to see, questions you want to us to address. We comments. want to get into all that. And then whatever he's doing. Fast. Dude, your feet don't even touch the ground. You can't <laughs> ride that bike. To touch the ground. It's on a stand, dude. If I it, have it, that down, doesn't count. It no, yeah. it probably doesn't. Uh, you 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 look like you you look like the passenger on this bike right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're riding in the back, bro. <laughs> if your feet don't touch the ground when you get to a red light, you're just gonna tip the fuck. I 100% know that my feet touch the ground because I helped move it. It's fucking jacked up on a stand. Hey, bro, it's okay. Dude. I remember the first time somebody called me short. It sucked. You are literally a quarter of an inch taller than me, bro. Uh, <laughs> Why are you still on there, dude? <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed, with our new hiring, we brought in John, we brought in Lewis. These are all guys that are above six feet tall, and so we're, we're balancing out the height here at Grand Caliber. I'm 6'1". Oh, and Gavin, too. They're all tall. Yes. And Max. Yeah, I'm behind the camera. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're six Hello. One. I'm six one. I gotta get that surgery. Extend my legs. Damn. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I'm gonna do the surgery where they like, get adjustable, so I can adjust my height, so I don't have to be tall some days. So it's like, all right, you know, <laughs> ratchet it up. <laughs> I think they make shoes for that dog. Oh yeah. Just wear high heels, bro. High heels. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys haven't, actually, you guys would never see this, but Marco went off last night. How many watches? <laughs> That's oh, literally how I imagine you would look like on a fast car. <laughs> <laughs> how many watches like, did you sell last night, dude? Uh, well, I sold both of Vintage Daytonas, which have been really hot lately, by the way. 6263, 6265. Sold those. 6239, sold that. Been having people buzzing around Vintage Daytona. Let's go. 7712 sold. Dang. Sold a GMT Marco's last on fire. night. Bro's going and crazy. went back to the gym. Dang. Your whole life is turning around right now. I know. See, I lost all. See, it's still going down. Did you yeah, see that? I see it. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new diet, bro. Yeah, bro. It's still going down, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. But yes, check out our new podcast. It comes out every Wednesday. I think at this point we're just a couple episodes in. Yep. So listen every Wednesday. Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And apparently, eventually, Twitter. Twitter, K1014. Amazon, yeah. We'll do the radio, the K1014, K1021, you know. Oh, like our own live radio. <laughs> a little radio show? Yeah, dude. That'd be sick. We are potentially taking a spot that had a new station, so. Mm. 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 We need to turn this potentially into we are taking I'm it. working on it, my guy. Hurry up, bro. Golly. It's a life-changing moment here, dude. Beyond Time Pieces, the Grand Caliber Podcast. Unfiltered. Hey, guys. If you like that video, like comment and subscribe if you have any questions put them below and we'll try to get back to you uh, but one other thing we need some help specifically Marco he needs a administrative assistant the guy's crazy busy he's constantly traveling to IWJG closing deals uh, making content so if you're interested in that position you can email me at careers at grandcaliber.com or visit our LinkedIn page and you can apply there as well. With this position, you'll be learning the ins and out of the business and also doing administrative tasks uh, for Marco to help free up his time. So again, careers at grandcaliber.com or visit our LinkedIn page.